Okay, the Penn State Blitz podcast, March, early March edition. Uh, we're finally here. I'm Bob Flounders of Penn Live, obviously, in the studio, our new studio. It's still, I, you can still say it's new, with Greg Pickle. Uh, always a lot to get to, Greg. We're going to talk about, unfortunately for Penn State and Penn State fans, a 2021 class decommit, the impact of that. We're going to look at how the Penn State Nittany Lions did in the 2020 NFL Combine. We're going to take a, just a quick sneak peek at some possible Penn State presence in the 2021 NFL Combine, and we're going to wrap it up with the Penn State Mailbag. Okay, the Penn State Blitz moves forward in March. I'm Bob Flounders. He's Greg Pickle. Obviously, you knew that. And yes, we are wearing ridiculously the same colored shirts. That was not planned, but you're welcome. A lot to get to, Greg, uh, this edition. Unfortunately, there was a 2021 decommit for Penn State at tight end. You could talk about that early. We're going to talk about how Penn State did in the 2020 NFL Combine. I want to make sure I get my years right. Because we're also going to take a look, uh, an early look at possible Penn State presence in the 2021 NFL Combine. And your favorite segment, the Penn State Mailbag, wraps it up for us. So let's break it down. Penn State's 2021 20, class is not that big, and it just got smaller. Penn State lost a de- – they got a decommit, uh, and it was a t- tight end from Florida. That's right. Yeah, Nick Elksness, Sunday afternoon as John Reed was performing well and getting uh, kudos from Deion Sanders at the Combine, uh, Nick Elksness, the tight end from Florida, decommitted. No great shock, I would say, Bob. I mean, I think that – You know, when a guy is that far away from your campus and you've had some offensive coaching staff turnover like Penn State has, his position coach, or now I guess former future position coach, Tyler Bowen, would have still been there. But, you know, you combine the fact that he has much easier access to Florida and to Florida State and to Miami uh, with the fact that Penn State's success in Florida has become almost primarily uh, because of Jaywan Sider over the last few years. And while he was involved in this recruitment, you know, he wasn't one of the guys, I think. It didn't feel like it was a cider commitment, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I think that there were some other uh, coaching staff members in play and things like that. So, you know, you're going to – I think the more you look at it, geography is never going to really work in your favor when you get a kid from that far away to commit to you that early. I mean, he committed last July, so well before he could even uh, consider signing, well before he could even take an official visit somewhere. Uh, sometimes with decommitments, uh, as Nate Bruce ex- is a good example of, you can decommit and then commit back. I don't see that being right. the case here, Bob. So just two commits left now in Penn State's class of 2021. Nate Bruce, of course, and Liam <laughs> Clifford. Could the, you imagine uh, if he had still decommitted? Right. We'd really be like, uh, so just Sean Clifford's brother then. Right. So, uh, you know, there's a panic out there, I think, uh, among the fan base a little bit, uh-huh. Bob, that gets concerned about that number. You know, Ohio State is – you know, among the top uh, classes in the country, yet again, they have the two PA kids, Marvin Harrison and Kyle McCord. There's some other Power Five programs that Penn State is in the same conversation right. with as it relates to the playoff that have pretty big classes at this point. Penn State does not. I don't think it's time to worry yet. They're, everyone they want, for the most part, is still out there. A lot of high four stars, five stars. You know, it, it's a big year for offensive line recruiting. Right. It'll be time to panic when some of these guys that are out there start going elsewhere. But for right now, I think you just have to sit back and relax and realize that the recruiting calendar has changed so much. It hurt Penn State mostly because of staff turnover and they couldn't have kids on campus Mm -hmm. in February to meet some of these uh, new coaches. So we'll see how things shake out. Yeah, and uh, I was going to say is it the reason there maybe shouldn't be uh, panic. I mean, Penn State has Brett and Strange, young tight end, already in the system. Theo Johnson from this mm-hmm. class is January enrolled. He's already up the campus. And there's another tight end. I think, Tyler Warren, yep. Tyler Warren. So they do have three young tight ends kind of in the pipeline. Had they not gotten maybe a second tight end in the 2020 class, maybe you get a little bit more crazy. But do you think they will go after yet? And they will go after a tight end in this class? I think so. There's some options out there. It doesn't mean, though, they're a favorite for any of them at this point. But I, I think they'll end up getting one. It, this With the transfer portal and with guys leaving early for the NFL, I think you're always going right. to want one guy at least at every position every year if you can swing it. That said, uh, you know, Kirk Sherrock, we've talked before that Kirk Sherrock didn't necessarily use a tight end in his offense at Minnesota, and it worked fine. So if Penn State would get to a point where maybe it didn't get a guy this year, some things didn't pan out as expected, I guess the good news would be that you know he can adapt his offense to not having that position as a strength like he does right now. 
Okay, uh, and also I just want to say before we get to uh, the Penn Staters and the Combine, I just wanted to congratulate you on your, sele your selection of uh, shirt color. Yeah. Um, for those of you that are listening on the podcast, you mm -hmm. can't see it, but Greg and I, without consulting each other, which we never do, somehow <laughs> managed to wear almost the exact same colored shirt right. to go with jeans. So it's like that uh, movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito, twins, only <laughs> yeah. like 35 years later, and one of us isn't a midget. Other than that, other than that, on that note, let's move forward. By the way, we're just doing one video here in the studio. One, obviously, the podcast in the studio. Yep. Because uh, as we tape this, Greg, we're gonna be head, we're gonna get in, in my car. Yep. And we're gonna be driving the speed limit with Joe Herman, mm -hmm. and we're gonna get up to a Penn State weight training. Uh, uh, you know, get a chance to look at them, kind of wrap things up, get a chance to talk to the strength coach Dwight Galt. Uh, just. Uh, just looking at social media, it sounds like Micah Parsons set yet another record. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll get we'll, that's just like a tease if you haven't heard, but I'm sure he'll be talking about Dwight. So we're gonna be we're gonna be actually doing some uh, some work from up at State College. Just want to let you know that in case there's a panic that there wasn't a second studio video, don't worry. Uh, there's more coming. Now let's talk about Penn State and the 2020 combine because we're gonna talk about the 2021 Correct. combine. Let's talk about the 2020 combine. Five guys at the Combine for Penn State. K.J. Hamler didn't do much, didn't run. Kind of disappointing, but you got to understand he's, he's, he wants to be healthy for the pro day run. The 40, it's going to be a big deal. Yep. As you look at how Penn State's players did, the quartet really did, um, in Indianapolis, what jumped out to you? Yeah, I thought that Robert Windsor was, and we had talked about this last week, but Rob Windsor was kind of a guy who maybe could play himself into the back end of the draft. Yeah, And sure. the testing numbers were there. Uh, and the same can be said for John Reed. Now, we've seen this before where it looks like guys were going to go from fringe draft pick, most yeah. likely undrafted free agent. They go to the combine. Things go really well. It appears they're going to sneak into the back end of the draft yeah. for sure. Then it doesn't work out that way. So I think you have to look at it with a small grain of salt. But I was impressed by what he did. I think he was underrated during his time at Penn State. He didn't necessarily get the you credit for Windsor? Yeah, okay. Windsor for the, the – yeah. Yeah, yeah, for what he did while, his, while he was at Penn State. Mm -hmm. With John Reed, he tested it well. Deion Sanders, I know. And, you know, the, I don't know if technique and fundamentals and stuff were ever a huge problem for him. And, you know, the fact that he was smooth is something mm -hmm. that Sanders pointed out, and that's great. And last time he uh, mentioned the Penn State defensive back was right. Troy Apke, nice and that worked pull. out well. So we'll see. Um, you know, the tape and the testing and all that will have to be put together. But... Um, they always test well out there. That's a credit to Dwight Galt and also the people that train these guys after they leave Penn State. Um, another good year. Yeah, and I think uh, I think one thing that I think the fans should remember is, so if you're Robert Windsor and John Reed and you've played yourself into maybe, who, who knows how teams view you. Say you're right. either on the bubble to be drafted or go in the seventh round. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're these guys, you might prefer to be a free agent because you can kind of pick your spot right you can kind of look at the team and see what your chances are of making it as as opposed to being drafted by one team and that really kind of right uh you know really kind of <clears throat> compromises your chances a little bit who knows they could go earlier but i think they were both viewed as late round guys as best and maybe john reed really helped himself cam brown didn't think run did not really run the way i thought he would i think he ran in the four seven yeah Maybe high four sevens. I don't think I don't believe Etor did not ran. Um, I think as as we as we talk about it now, Greg, Etor is still because there's a dearth. Big word. There's a dearth of edge pass rushers mm -hmm. other than um, the Ohio State kid who's escaping me. Even though he could be Chase the, Young. Chase Young. He yep. could be the he wrecked Penn State's offensive line. I couldn't remember his name. So good. Kudos to me. Other than him, there's no set defensive end pure pass rusher. I really like AJ Epinesa, but. Maybe not a pass rusher as much as a all-around player. I think Etor still got a real good good shot to go in the first round. Yeah. Um, as far as KJ, um, Penn State's pro day is St. Patrick's Day, yep. so that's kind of we're a little sad about that for obvious reasons. I think people have been playing along with us the last couple of years. It's going to delay some things. Right. But you know, if he runs well and he and a team <laughs> late in the first round, yeah. you know, feels like they're one one dangerous weapon away that's similar to Deshaun Jackson, which he's been compared to. He could pop into the first rounder, yeah. but more than likely he might he might find a home somewhere in the second round, and there's there's obviously nothing wrong with that. I think Cam Brown is a mystery man. Mid rounds, late rounds, did he help himself with the combine? I don't know. There still might be a couple guys, Greg, that didn't participate in the combine that could get could could get drafted late. Jan Johnson 
is the name that comes to mind. I don't know how people feel about Garrett Taylor, mm -hmm. but I think you know I think it will be a very interesting draft weekend for the Penn State Nittany Lions. A lot of sitting around and waiting. I think it, you're right. Guys could go in the fourth, fifth, sixth. Who knows? Day three will be interesting, but. Uh, I guess we'll get to the commercial now, the Penn State Blitz podcast, I love, Bob. I love it. Yeah, it's uh, Apple. Uh, don't don't if you're if you're watching, don't confuse Greg and I talking because of our similar shirt pullover to colors. This is Greg again. It's not me talking about one about of these the days YouTubes. when we get the green screen fired up in here. We're both going to wear green shirts, no, and then you'll just see our heads. One of these days, I'm going to wear I'm going to wear the orange sherbet tux from Dumb and Dumber, <laughs> and you're going to wear the powder blue tux with the top hat. Maybe we'll do it if they make, if they make the national college playoff. There you go. Maybe we'll rent some tux, and we'll just we'll do the next pod we'll do the next podcast in blitz in tuxedo. So there you go. We'll have to check if that's in the budget. That is something to shoot for. But anyway, I'm interrupting you. Sorry. Yep. The Penn State Blitz podcast, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your audio. Don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe. If you're watching the Blitz on YouTube.com slash All Penn State, or of course on PennLive.com slash All Penn State, don't forget to check back later Wednesday, Thursday morning. We're going to have more there, including another video uh, about the weight room stuff, Dwight Galt. That seemed like a surprise to you. Did you really think Joe Hermit was going to go to State College with us and not <laughs> shoot us a video of us talking? So we'll get to that later, but uh, let's move on to 2021 Combines on Deck. See, now the, now the 20... The 20 the, the 2020 combine, Greg, I think was just, you know, once it became apparent that KJ wasn't going to run, I think if you're a Penn State fan, eh. But there's been, I, the last couple of years, um, you know, the the Barkley Gesicki combine mm -hmm. and the, with Apke, yeah. I thought Penn State kind of stole the show. I thought the way that Miles and some other performed last year, you know, big thumbs up. And Penn State was talked about a lot during right. during uh, the broad, uh, the telecast. Well, I think that could happen again next year just because of a couple players um, that might be at the combine. I think it could be very interesting, if a, especially if a couple of underclassmen for Penn State are very talented, decide to come out. It would be a shock if they didn't. But I think that they have a chance, especially um, especially one player in particular that we, we always talk a lot about. But it's the 2021 combine shapes up where you could see seven, eight, nine Penn State players at this combine, and a couple of them might be just major storylines. Um, I know we'll, we'll talk about a couple, but who, other than the obvious, who are a couple of guys that you think maybe could really put on a show uh, a year from now in Indianapolis? Yeah, I got to say first, I hope the TV ratings this year were bad because the primetime thing kind of ruined it for me. I didn't <laughs> really, it wasn't really of interest to me well, at I mean, this next point. next year we but, might be there. Well, you never know. That's true. But obviously, number 11, Micah Parsons, yeah. uh, will be one to watch if he does come out of school early, which we assume that he will. You know, Michael Mennett will have to go there next year. Could have went this year, decided to come back. Love it. You know, we've watched him do all kinds of athletic things since he was in high school. Mm -hmm. And so him testing well will not come as a surprise there. Uh, I know in the piece he wrote, you mentioned Journey Brown. And he does, yeah. you, especially as a pure runner. I sure. mean, it's amazing how much time these guys can shave when they just focus on proper technique and, and running that. He's only that and only that. Back. Right. He knows so, how to run. Those guys obviously jump off the page at you. Maybe some others uh, will too, but I do think that uh, you're when you're right. That next year could be a show stealing year for Penn State. Pat Fryermuth. I yep. mean, if he can run in the four sixes, looking like Godzilla. Right. I mean that in a good way, Pat. Looking like Godzilla, and he. I mean, he could be sitting on a. You know, he was very close this year. I mean, he could be the Mackey Award winner. He could be first team All Big Ten. He could be an All American. Yep. You know, type player, much like Micah. He's another guy. Um, a couple of interesting guys for me, just, just you know, you never know how things are going to go, but, you know, Shaka Tony should, in theory, be there next yep. year. And I don't know if the Penn State uh, fan base caught this, but when they interviewed Etor Gross Matos out there, he mentioned there was a sophomore named Jason Owe yeah. who ran 4'3 at 260 pounds. And the guy that was tweeting it out said it's, like, impossible. Yeah. But, I mean, Micah told me, and I told, he told you last year that he beat him and his 40 time was better, and this guy's 15 pounds heavier. Right. And we are assuming that Micah's 4-4 was legit. So, you know, I, it would be really a projection, I think, for Jason to go next year. But if he has a breakout year, I mean, you just eventually he's going to go to the combine and he's going right. to put on a show and people are going to be talking about him. You know, uh, um, uh, Tariq Castro-Fields, I, yes. I get YGM and TCF. Mixed up sometimes. He it's could a challenge. Run, he could run sometimes. I, mean, I just think there's a lot of guys. If John Han Dotson has a big year this mm -hmm. year, I mean they could they could have double digit number 
performers at the combine. In that case, we're definitely going. So that's good news for downtown Indianapolis. Right. No question. We have a couple of good spots there that we enjoy. Maybe we'll talk about them on a future podcast. <laughs> All right. So I think we wrapped up present and future combines in Penn State. So that means really the only thing left is the Penn State mailbag. And there is, you know, the most obvious thing as we are now in March, you know, winter conditioning is wrapped up. It's, it's almost time for uh, it's almost time for the start of spring practice unofficially or officially what is Penn State's first media availability is right on the, the heels yeah, it's of like, that pro day. Right. Is it's it like 17, 18 or 16, 17? 18, 19, something in that ballpark. Yeah. So uh, it'll be here before we know it. So the guys are on spring break next week. So okay. they're all out of town. Uh, then when they come back, you know, things pretty much get going um, the second that they're back in town. So. It'll be interesting, Bob, as you look at, um, and we've kind of kicked around some spring questions mm -hmm. the last couple of weeks, but I'm interested in focusing on the linebacker position today because yeah. we know Micah Parsons, returning All-American, obviously, is considered one of the best defensive players in the country. Mm -hmm. Concern or no concern about what's behind him in terms of it translating from looks like it's going to be good to actually being good? Well, I mean, I don't, I didn't, I didn't really think there was a lot of drop off at middle linebacker when Ellis Brooks came into the game to spell Jan Johnson, mm -hmm. and I, I just feel like now that they've had some uh, season under their belt, you know, both both Brandon Smith and Lance Dixon should be able to hit the ground running literally in the fall if they're healthy. I I don't see any downside to playing Brandon Smith. Uh, regularly, I don't want to dismiss the chances of Jesse Lucada, who I know is a very experienced player. If Penn State wants to use him as well, but athletically, uh, Greg, the thought of seeing uh, at one point in time maybe Brandon Smith, Dixon, and Micah on the field at the same time. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know that there's been a faster trio in Penn State history uh, at the linebacker group. But I mean, we also I think Greg. One of the things I think that. Uh, you know, I, I don't think there's anywhere. I think there'll be, I think there'll be a better group, um, but they're going to be. There's only, there's going to be a lot of times I think when they only have two linebackers on the field. Sure. I mean, I, th and I would imagine it would be Micah and either Lance or probably Brandon Smith. I mean, maybe they will keep Ellis on the field, but mm. when you look at the athlete, the athletes they have at linebacker, they have so many options. Brent Pry does, um, and I'm sure there's some other guys we didn't really even talk about uh, the burgeoning five-star recruit they have, I think, who comes in August, Curtis Jacobs. You bet. Um, and I'm sure, you know, they've always played him if they were ready or if they thought they could contribute either. Well, now, in this day and age, they have to be able to contribute um, as a top six linebacker because, uh, you know, Jordan Stout has taken really the kickoff coverage right. thing out of play. So there's really to play a linebacker as gifted as these guys as freshmen, you know, just on punt coverage just really doesn't seem like – a smart thing. So we'll see, but I just think that they they're they're so stacked at the linebacker position. I think it's I think the only mystery is, you know, I, I think it's going to be I think it'll be Micah and Ellis Brooks to start the year. Um, who's the third linebacker going to be? Is Jesse Lucada going to be able to hold off some of these young guys? But man, Brandon Smith, you know, I think it's only a question of when. There's a lot of people that are excited about him, and I know you and I are on that list as well. Would you move Mike inside when they go 4-3? Would you try him at middle linebacker? Boy, when he's when he's inside, I, I, I think maybe it, there's at times he could play inside, but I think just as outside linebacker, maybe, you know, to the field, he can, he can cover so much ground. He can yeah. do so many things. I mean, if he ever can catch a ball that's in his hands, he's going to have a couple pick sixes. He said it was going to come when they needed it most. I thought there were a couple times last yeah. year that was the case, but, but at I any mean, rate. He, he can do so many things, and really – uh, the way that Penn State plays their defense, I mean, the difference between middle and and and, and the weak side linebacker uh, is kind of uh, you're probably I mean, in terms of being inside or outside, kind of like splitting hairs. But I mean, we're talking about a guy like my, he he played at two forty five last year, Greg. If you're Penn State, do you want him to gain weight or do you just want him to keep him right there? Right. The guy's still growing. You might be able to. I mean, he 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 could very well play at two fifty and run. And run four four, which is going to be fascinating to watch. But I just and I think that Brandon Smith, boy, I just I just can't wait to see the the possibilities and the, the combinations that they can play with to get their best athletes on the field to really make that defense even faster. Best change Penn State's made since January first and returning from the Cotton Bowl to now. They almost started spring practice. What is it? Best change. Um, and you can define best however you like. 
Boy, I don't... I, Just I'm, note that they haven't added beer to the press box, so that cannot be a part of the list. <laughs> Best change <laughs> at Penn State. Um, you know, I, I, I think... I, I just have a feeling that um, for James to move on from Matt Limegrover, when you know seemingly, and we don't know everything, we don't right? Know everything behind the scenes, he. That, I kind of felt like the the offensive line got a little bit better each year, and that he obviously had better athletes playing the offensive line. But for James to move on from him and get a guy like Phil Troutwine, um, I think for both development and recruiting. I think the ramification, he could be a guy like uh, J. Juan Sider in terms of also being very knowledgeable as a position coach, but also bringing a lot to the table in terms of what he's able to do and getting four star or five star offensive linemen to consistently come to Penn State. I have a feeling, I have a feeling that James uh, knew he had a chance to get somebody special on the staff, and I think, I think it's going to play out that way. Anything else we need to kick around, Bob? I mean, I mean, I'm good. I'm good. If we, if you just wanna, if you just wanna, you know, once we wrap up this video, we can talk about what shirts we'll wear that are identical next week. We could do that, but I don't think, I don't think the Penn State fans really need to hear that. So we could probably wrap it up. Once again, just a reminder: we're headed to State College. Just one video uh, in addition to the podcast, but there'll be more coming, courtesy of the Penn State weight training availability and our good friend Joe Hermit, Mark Pines. You did a great job as well. But uh, I think it's time to wrap this up.